I don't know if you remember, but there was a Dr. Seuss parody earlier this year that I was really looking forward to buying a copy of. It was called Oh, the Places You'll Boldly Go. And it was a sort of parody mashup of, well, I guess that's the that's the argument though. Was it a parody or was it a mashup? This is a community supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Was it a parody or was it a mashup of Oh, the Places You'll Go and Star Trek, the original series? And the artists drew Star Trek, the original series characters in Oh, the Places You'll Boldly Go situations and scenes, as you'll see here. And a judge decided that it was fair use or transformation or a parody, all three. I think it was mostly transformation and that made it a fair use. So let's see why Dr. Seuss Enterprises thinks they have grounds for an appeal. This is a redacted appeal, so there will be some things that we don't know, and it is 81 pages long, so we're not gonna really be able to go through it all. We can look at their table of contents here as sort of a summary, because like I said, we're not gonna be able to go through it all. They go through the history of all oh, the places you'll boldly go and all oh, the places you'll go. I guess we're going to call them go for all oh, the places you'll go and boldly for all oh, the places you'll boldly go. Then they have a three page or four page summary of the argument and that might be where we stop because then they're going to go through, it looks like another 40 pages of argument and pointing out what they think the problems are. Let's see if the summary is enough to get us there. I'm going to scroll past all their citations and citations and more citations and more citations. Statement of the issues. Did the district court err by determining? So these are, and I don't want to, I don't want to make this mischaracterize this. These are softball questions, but this, I'm not making fun of, I'm not criticizing. This is where you want to put the softball questions. You're presenting the issue to the case, to the, of, of the case to the court. What is the question? So from your perspective, or should I say from Dr. Seuss Enterprise's perspective, the question is, did the district court, the lower court, Error, commit error, by determining that defendant's book, Boldly, was a fair use of Dr. Seuss's copyrighted works, granting them summary judgment on copyright fair use and denying summary judgment for copyright infringement. So yes, it's a softball question, but then they're going to spend the next 60, 50, 50 some pages answering that question and this question here. Did the district court err by granting the motions for judgment on the pleadings? Same thing. So same, same, basically same question from the trademark perspective. Statement of the case. Let's see who, everybody knows who owns what. That's fine. We've all watched the original video, right? And we're going to skip through, I think, all of this history. So they're going to show from their perspective why they think this is infringement. And so here you can see the, the two scenes obviously share that background. And it's the same basic colors and style. And then Star Trek characters are added in the infringing work. You can see on the left the Dr. Seuss page in Go, and then the Star Trek interpretation in Boldly on the right. You can see another one here, the original on the left, and then you have some, I think that's Kirk there hanging by his underwear. Here's some more. Now, I don't know if you remember, but from the district court's granting of summary judgment in favor of Boldly, the fact that they copied the exact scenes and then reinterpreted them as Star Trek scenes, that was the transformation. It was not considered per se copying because they were being transformed into new scenes. But you can see how one would make the argument that these are copies of one another. And then this scene was, was one of the famous ones. So let's go down and see their summary of the argument. The district court erred as a matter of law in granting summary judgment. The undisputed record shows that each of the four statutory fair use factors favors the Dr. Seuss Enterprises, favors uh, Go. The first factor, the purpose and character of defendant's use, favors Go because the use was exploitative and intended to grab the attention of potential buyers, not transformative. Boldly does not parody or comment on, criticize or teach about Go or Dr. Seuss. Defendants added no new purpose to the many Dr. Seuss drawings they meticulously copied. They merely aped 
the purpose of Go, entertaining the readers, mostly graduates starting out in the world with an uplifting story, populating Dr. Seuss's imaginative illustrated world's settings with Star Trek characters and props, and adding some Seuss-like doggerel, did not result in any transformation favored by the Copyright Act. It simply infringed two different copyright holders' rights. The second factor, the nature of the copyrighted work, favors Seuss as the unique creative works are entitled to maximum copyright protection, so does the third factor, the amount and substantiality of what was taken, because defendants copied extensively from Dr. Seuss and took many imaginative drawings that were central to his books. The fourth factor, harm to Dr. Seuss's potential markets, also weighs decisively against fair use. The district court erred in shifting the burden on this factor to Dr. Seuss. Fair use is an affirmative defense, and its proponent must show absence of market harm, even if the challenged use is transformative. Defendants failed to show there was no market harm, so the fourth factor favors Dr. Seuss as a matter of law. In addition, there was overwhelming record evidence showing likely market harm. The court erred by limiting its consideration to the potential effects of Boldly itself on Go's markets. The fourth factor requires consideration of whether harmful effects would follow if everyone were allowed to copy from Dr. Seuss in the same way and likewise targeted the primary graduation market for Go. The undisputed facts show that such widespread taking would significantly harm both the direct and derivative markets for Go. Seuss showed that Boldly was intended to appeal to a subset of Go's existing graduation market audience, that Seuss actively exploited derivative markets that included mashup type collaborations with other copyright owners, that Seuss would consider a collaboration with Star Trek's rights holders. Uh, Seuss further showed that allowing widespread mashups of Go would permit specialized pop culture versions of Go to substitute for buying the original book. It would also usurp Seuss's active derivative licensing market and deter others from seeking to do mashup collaborations with Dr. Seuss Enterprises. Because all four use factors decisively favor Dr. Seuss, the court should reverse the, ju the judgment below as to fair use direct entry of a liability judgment in favor uh, of Seuss on copyright infringement and remand for a determination on damages. The district court also erred in dismissing or entering summary judgment on Seuss's trademark and unfair competition claims. The book title, Oh, the Places You'll Go, functions as a source identifying mark, which is reinforced through the numerous derivative works originated by Dr. Seuss Enterprises that are based on Go and have titles that are variations on the original. Seuss is entitled to show a jury that consumers view books with such titles as originating with or approved by Dr. Seuss. This court has rejected the legal ground on which the district court dismissed this claim, that use of a trademark alone cannot be explicitly misleading for purposes of First Amendment analysis. The district court also erred in holding categorically that Dr. Seuss's unique illustration style and font cannot function as source identifying trademarks. This court should therefore vacate and remand for trial on those claims. So we are not going to spend the next 51 pages, but we will follow this case closely and bring you the appellate court's decision when they make one. Um, I certainly do see their argument, but the Oh, the Places You'll Boldly Go does also seem very, very transformative, and so it really could be something that is on the line, and maybe two courts disagree. We did get a very well-reasoned opinion from the lower court, and the standards for review, I don't know if the standard for review for summary judgment on fair use, that might be de novo, so we might get a brand new uh, fair use review from the appellate court, which I'm guessing, let me see here, what appellate court are we in? This is probably the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit. Yeah, this is going to be the Ninth Circuit. So we're going to get a another appellate ruling from the Ninth Circuit, it seems like, on fair use and whether or not mashups are transformative. Well, what if it goes in favor of mashups? Wouldn't that be really cool? Hmm. All right, that is our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. 
This has been the Sunday, August 11th episode of Lawful Masses. With me in the virtual studio is Brandon, our community manager. Thank you very much for being here, Brandon. And thank you to our supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash law at the $500 level. Thank you very much to Joshua Davis from Tanda Pay. We're working on Mr. Davis's video and uh, hope, hope to have that out before I go to uh, Luxembourg. We'll see. It might, might still be working on it by the time when I go. Thank you to the $50 plus supporters, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Jan Negray, Blackleaf, Spirit Bear, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wazatsky, Not Mike, Joe Tyson, and King Macro. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me, along with the other supporters. All of you will be in the description of the videos that drop. Anyway, love you all. Have a good night and a good week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Bye.